First off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the grand predecessor, mercy of grand predecessor, <coughs> predecessor, and transmitting masters and everyone else here to uh, to continue to talk about the shower of wisdom. So we're now on part number s uh, wait. It should uh, be seven. Seven, right? Seven. Yes. I thought you typed it in. No, no. Well, there was a type one, but yeah. for some reason, <laughs> number seven. You should have told me number. I would have yeah, you, you typed it in the... Ryan typed up... Yeah, I thought... 80, 85%. Oh, okay. I thought, yeah, I thought I had that whole thing, but I, I don't have that one. But for some reason, the seven was not typed up, so oh. I don't know. Uh, or in the cop in the thing that I have, so... But anyways, so we'll use this. <coughs> Plus, I realized that there's some uh, yeah. spelling mistakes and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so I was talking about ideas, and uh, so previously it was talking about the, the mind in general, um, the heart and mind. Uh, so now it's talking a little bit more specifically the ideas, or you can say thoughts, uh, you know, notions, and, uh, whatever in the mind. Okay. So, <coughs> so here, holy teacher uh, wants to ask us a question, uh, and. <laughs> You know, we got to be courageous in answering, right? So, how do you feel about the ideas, or I guess thoughts, really, in, in your own mind? Okay, are the ideas in your mind sometimes many, few, agitated or peaceful, good or bad, happy or angry? See, they spell angry wrong. I don't know. <laughs> um, the ideas in a person's mind can make him go to heaven or hell. It can decide the quantity of his merits and demerits. Can make him a saint or a devil and can bring him blessings or disasters, yeah. So, uh, I guess Buddhists, or, you know, we, we say that, you know, heaven and hell, the difference between heaven and hell is, the difference is like one thought. You can say it's one thought, the difference. Right? It's all in the mind, basically. We, we create whether it's heaven or hell for us. I mean, not necessarily the, actually, it's whatever is in the mind. That is the true reality, you can say, or at least it's, rel it's relative, though. It's relative to each person, but that is really the reality that matters, not the external reality. Right. Yeah, so that's why all the Buddha say there's no objective reality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quantum mechanics yeah. said that, too, but <laughs> whatever. Because the reason why is objective reality is conditioned. Yeah. That's very important. Well, yeah. <coughs> yeah, no, it's conditioned, okay? And the reason why it's subjective is because it, sh it all comes from your perception yeah. of the conditions, right. you can say, of the conditions that creates such a reality, right. or we call it objective reality, okay? Yeah, uh, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, whether or not there is an objective external reality, I mean, we can say, you know, there, there, there are the, the elements, you know, the, the chemical elements that make up every all matter but um all yeah how we perceive it that's really the most important thing because right? because you know, well of course yeah everything changes changing. but you know it's how we perceive uh, everything okay so that ultimately that is the reality uh so it can be different for different people the reality um i mean that is yeah maybe that is part of the true reality i don't know but uh no no no, no. The, po the point of of when we say what Buddha is saying subjective reality or from this is basically saying this everything is from our Buddha nature right. the source yeah. well, what, 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 when we use that term subjective objective reality we're not using in dialectical terms no 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 and that's wrong that's the wrong barking up the wrong tree what, what, what they meant what Buddha meant by subjective reality you know what I'm saying, is that everything is viewed through your Buddha nature now now how you perceive it is different Yes, if you don't see, if you th if your senses either have, you know, some, I don't know, uh, some defects, <laughs> whatever, biases, whatever, then that's gonna twist. That's what we say. Oh, it's subjective in the sense that it comes to duality. It becomes subjective in the sense that oh, everybody senses things differently, right? Or perceive things different. But that's not because it's your Buddha nature is defective. Ah, make 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 that distinction. It's because your mind, human mind, now I'm talking about consciousness, the six, the, the six consciousness, the seven consciousness, is, I'm saying, tainted, it's defiled, remember? That's why the seven consciousness is called the defiled mind, the manas, the manas mind, okay? 
that defile. It's because it's defiled. Yeah, you have your Buddha nature. Yeah, that, that sees everything, right? Because a dead person doesn't see anything, right? Doesn't perceive, right? But you have a Buddha nature, but it goes through, it's filtered through your seventh, sixth, fifth, whatever, okay? But because it's tainted, therefore, when I say tainted, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily evil. No, no, just like... Influence. Right? Yeah, influence, yeah. Defiled, that's what they mean by defiled, okay? Therefore, bias, whatever, it becomes subjective. Make sense? But when you talk about the seven, that's already in the duality realm, right? Make sense? So what Buddha is saying is not that subjective there, but the subjective is there. It's the Buddha nature. Everything is perceived through the Buddha nature. Okay, now, the result is that because you have a defiled mind, therefore, it's different. Make sense? But if you so let's look at Buddhas. All the Buddhas, all the saints, be it Guan Yin, be it uh, uh, Manjursi, Samantha Tabra, etc. They see theirs through the Buddha nature, which humans do too, but when it goes through their seventh, there's no defilement. Make sense? It's that's why they say it's clear. It's clean, it's pure, it's clear. It doesn't, it does, it's like going through a lens that's perfectly clear. You see what I'm trying to say? So everything is still from their Buddha nature. So they perceive that through them. Humans, that lens, that whatever lens, it's tainted. You get it? It's either defiance, dust, whatever. That means what dust means, our desires, you know, defilement, whatever, whatever. Okay, you get it? So that's where the difference lies. Sorry, no. <laughs> I'm just explaining clear. That's what yeah, it well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can say that, it, it, you know, all the Buddhas, the Buddhas view everything, you can say they view it the same way, the equal. I mean, because they're all viewing it from the Buddha nature, which is quote unquote absolute, uh, whereas all the other views are relative. So that's why it would be different for each person. Um, but, but I assume if we achieve that level of the, the Buddha where we have, you know, complete stillness of the mind or whatever, then, then we should, we would perceive things the same. Makes sense. Because there are no, none of these other biases, things like that, that are conditional, right? Okay, so, so here Buddha, uh, I mean, uh, Holy Teacher uh, first talks about the evil ideas in a person's mind. So when a person is rushed in his talking, so, you know, he's, um, yeah, rushed. Um, what's another word for rushed? Uh, what is it? Talking a mal <laughs> Well, you know, G, I guess. I mean, I guess what it, yeah. In his talking and acting, <coughs> makes himself very angry, impatient, and worried. Mm -hmm. Then all these things are called the chaos of the mind. Uh, so when a person procrastinates in his own affairs or in his work, makes his body remiss uh, and his mind idle, all these are called the negligence of the mind. Okay, when a person does not realize what is right or wrong, never recognizes what is true or false, and does believe recklessly, and these are called the ignorance of the mind. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, there's a lot here. Uh, uh -oh. oh, okay. So let's see. Let, let, let's just talk about these. I guess these are okay. So, yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of things. All right. So, yeah, um, now those who are very impatient, uh, they tend to, <laughs> well, when, when they talk or they act, they, I mean, now we always say, like, you, you should think before you speak or <laughs> say something, right? Make sure that, you know, um, and so um, a lot of people are also influenced by, you know, they get angry, so they have a temper, and then so that's, I think actually, you know, those who have temper are impatient, generally. I mean, I think they go together, <laughs> right? If, you, if you're patient, you probably don't get angry, usually. Not, yeah, not less likely. Think, yeah, I think you would just be calm and yeah. So, so those two go together, and and it's 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 not a good trait to have um, because then we end up um, saying or doing things that that can really cause problems uh, or create karma. Um, so, but this is kind of what uh, holy teacher calls the chaotic mind. Okay, uh, run. I guess yeah, you use the word run. Run. Xing. Okay. Uh, those who procrastinate, okay, yeah, so, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, sometimes we, I think we all kind of do this too. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, you know. Uh, I can do everything Yeah, tomorrow. yeah, I don't want to do it right now. I, I'll do it later. Especially um, men. <laughs> men? 
<laughs> Men don't do things right away. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's overgeneralizing. <laughs> um, but you know, then then basically, I don't know. People, <laughs> their mind is idle, uh, uh, and you know, so we don't kind of lazy basically lazy yeah lazy so that's being negligent right so we have <laughs> a negligent mind um and so what person doesn't realize what's right and wrong so this is also uh unfortunate a lot of people are are in this category too uh um yeah then we start believing anything um believing things that maybe oh the president says this and they believe it <laughs> even though it could be a, a lie, right? But, you know, that's, so that's the ignorance of the mind. So that's very dangerous, too. That, that's actually very dangerous. Okay, <clears throat> so that can cause people to do things that, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. Okay, so uh, when a person wants whatever he sees, chases whatever he thinks can profit him, is easily swung by the changing conditions, strokes off responsibility, no matter what business he's engaged in, then these are called the demerits of the mind. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, yeah, so we're looking, seeking advantages, um, seeking anything that can benefit me personally. Um, uh, you know, when conditions change, I'll say, oh, I changed my mind because, you know, whatever uh, situation changed. Um, you know, these are people, you know, basically, you don't have no foundation. I mean, but, but, uh, but yeah, so Holy Teacher calls these demerits uh, of the mind. Um, they don't they don't take off res take on responsibilities either okay so all right um, <coughs> when a person allows his good ideas to turn into bad ones permits those bad ideas to exist uh, allows himself to believe that the evil opinions are true and follows them behaves with abandon as if they were correct and these are called the evils in the mind so this is yeah so this is when we say person is evil right uh, they kind of fall into this category where um, well, you can say they're deluded too. They're de deluded in following these these false falsehoods or whatever. Um, that that then they go maybe they start shooting people, you know, uh, things like that, right? Based on their these false ideas. Um, okay, so yeah, so those are evil. Okay, <clears throat> so when a person only sees the superficial part of things and never realizes the real underlying meaning. Uh, likes to speak or listen to hearsay, you know, gossip, right? Uh, sees things narrowly as he as if he were a horse with blinders on. Um, has shallow understanding. Does not know when is the correct moment to advance or withdraw. Uh, speaks boastful words. Does things without restraint. Then all these things are called the insanities of the mind. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so again, uh, yeah, I think <coughs> even people who are maybe in religious practice a lot, a lot of it is superficial um, so that that's I guess the importance of the, the Buddha nature understanding the Buddha nature is to kind of get to the deep to, to the yeah to the actual the true uh, meaning of things um, not just look at the superficial just the words and the the, 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 the words the scriptures uh, superficially that, that there's um, it's more that's more than that okay so um and then gossip of course yeah we should uh gotta avoid gossip um hearsay so that's all rumors right so a lot of a lot of these conspiracy theories that are spread around <laughs> the internet and people believe them right um or they spread them uh so yeah and a lot of people have the blinders on right they have a very narrow point of view uh and so that causes extreme views and they can be extreme to the right left or whatever whichever direction uh, and that can cause a lot of conflict and problems karma <coughs> um, okay so uh, so those are the insanities <laughs> of the mind uh, when a person retains the advantage for himself while passing on the disadvantages to others it is industrious at beginning but doing things it uh, at the beginning of doing things, but is indolent at the end, seeks for a comfortable living and has a chaotic mind, okay, is happy about what he likes, but is angry about what he dislikes. All these are the confusions of mind. So, so most people are confused, right? They, they have this chaotic mind and they want good things for themselves and, you know, they just give the bad things to others. 
uh, or they become lazy. I mean, they, they, they have, in other words, they don't, they don't have the, uh, I don't know, what, what do you call it, the, the, the will, the what was all, I mean, like, they, they might initially be, oh, yeah, like, just, just like Dharma class, you know, it's like people, some people, but you hear the people who, who kind of share their, their thoughts and feelings, and it's like, sounds like they're very excited, they're very, uh, what do you say, flashing, you know, inspired, whatever, but then doesn't last, right? So, uh, unfortunately, they're still stuck on, well, I mean, they're still stuck on the world, I mean, uh, on the material world and, and things around them, on the conditions around them that, that kind of prevent them from uh, continuing, you know, maintaining that inspired mind. Um, okay, so that's the confused mind, all right, confusions of the mind. Um, <coughs> so when a person has pretended friendship and affection, um, Flatters another while plotting to stab him in the back is a wolf in sheep's clothing or sheepskin, uh, speaks unreasonable words and is cruel in his behavior, then all these are called the dangers of the mind. Okay, so this is even, I guess these are kind of my different levels. Uh, this is probably like very, this is like a scheming person. Okay, so, you know, and, and, and they pretend uh, just so that they can get their way or, or achieve some, uh, some motive of theirs. Uh, so this is this is pretty s scary. I mean, because you on the surface you can't tell. Maybe can't tell that they're, they're you're scheming behind. You know, trying to stab you in the back. But uh, so that's why this is a danger. Dangers in the mind. Okay, because they might actually do something bad. <laughs> uh, um, okay, and uh, yeah. So obviously speaking unreasonable and cruel uh, cruelty in their behavior. Okay, so. Um, uh, we've seen that. So, so these things, uh, holy teacher says, they all belong to disasters, demerits, hell, <laughs> and devils. Okay. So, I mean, basically, yeah. Besides, maybe creating uh, disasters for other people, they bring it upon themselves as well. Okay, through the karma. Um, so, so obviously, these are the not not the good thing, the the, the bad things that we uh, in our minds. So we have to be careful of these things. So now Holy Teacher talks about the good, good th thoughts or ideas in a person's mind. When a person reveres God's holy will because it is venerable, respects the superior person because that person is virtuous, reveres the saint's words, is vigilant of the mean and base person's intentions, then these are called the attentiveness, attentiveness of the mind. So basically, yeah, you can say kind of an awareness. Um, so, uh, you know, respecting and revering um, God's will, heaven's will, um, uh, or e those who are quote unquote superior, you know, those who have virtue, those who are um, well cultivated, uh, then, and also at the same time being vigilant, careful of those other kind of the, <laughs> the other people who have the, the evil ideas in their minds, uh, you know, be careful of those people. Um, and so that's being aware, okay, or attentive, right? Um, so we should strive to to do this, have this type of mind, okay? Always be aware. Yeah, I mean, I, I think cultivation. Uh, I, I forget, but the Buddhist has said, you know, cultivation is is being aware, okay? That, that awareness, okay? So that's very important. Uh, if we if we, if we cultivate it our whole life and we're not aware at the end, then we've we've wasted. <laughs> whole life of cultivation so we're not really cultivating okay so that's very important uh, a person may act in these ways <coughs> in regard to the use of his eyes he is anxious to see clearly okay in regard to his ears he is anxious to hear distinctly in regard to his countenance he is anxious to be that he's benign uh, in regard to his demeanor he is anxious that it should be respectful in regard to his speech he is anxious that it should be sincere in regard to his doing business, he is anxious that he should be reverently careful. In regard to what he doubts, he is anxious to inquire of others. When he's angry, he thinks of the difficulties his anger may involve him in. Uh, when he sees the gains to be made, he thinks of righteousness. All of these are called the thoughtful considerations of the mind. I, yeah, the mind. Okay, so, uh, so obviously, yeah, we need to see things clearly. 
So that's important that we understand a lot of the, the principles. You can say the principles of the Tao, of the, the truth, um, you know, how we should conduct ourselves, uh, what's our role in, in, in society and everything. Uh, so that we can see things clearly. We, yeah, also, you know, see that, see the, try to see the truth in things, right? Um, so so we, we, Buddhists keep telling us that, oh, you know, anything that is changing, that it is, is, is false, <coughs> right? So, so, you know, so we have to have that proper view, right? So this proper view of things, um, whether it's through any of our senses, okay? Uh, that, um, yeah, what is the truth? Okay, so the truth is not the, the material things, uh, things that can change, okay? Uh, those are all based on various different conditions, right? <coughs> so th in this way, then, we'll obviously we'll, we would <coughs> pursue, uh, pursue that path of the truth and pursue, which ultimately leads us to, uh, you know, transcending this, this cycle of, of samsara, uh, right? Okay, so, so yeah, so basically in all our behavior, uh, we should be, um, uh, we should always be ben benign, right? In our appearance, we should not look, look angry or, or, or whatever, um, and we should always be respectful, okay. Um, and sincerity, of course, uh, what we say, what we do, uh, okay. So, yeah, so definitely when we get, if we are angry, if we still have, oh, if we have doubts, right? So always it's very important that we clear up our doubts. The doubts in our mind are become an obstacle um, t for us to achieve, right? The ultimate enlightenment. So um, now it doesn't mean that all our questions can be answered necessarily, uh, you know, but you know, we have to consider, you know, what, what questions are important, right? Sometimes you know, I have questions, you know, in my mind, it's like, oh, you know, why about, about this, this whole world, the whole universe, like, you know, you know, sentient beings, are, are they, do they always exist, right? It's like, even though, oh, you know, the people transcend samsara and maybe they become Buddhas and saints, but, you know, in each cycle, I mean, there are always, there seems like there's, there will always be an infinite number of sentient beings. <laughs> I mean, because the, 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 it never ends, okay? So, so I don't know, but that, that's kind of a question, but it doesn't really, it shouldn't, the, you know, that question is not gonna prevent me from, from you know, cultivating and, and whatever, but uh, actually might, it might motivate me more <laughs> to, to become a Buddha, then maybe I'll have the answer <laughs> at that point, right? So, but yeah, so, you know, so a lot, some of these questions, maybe they're irrelevant to our cultivation, but but some doubts that we might have about, oh, you know, uh, whether basically these doubts prevent us from having faith, the faith and confidence, you can say, to, uh, to follow this path. Okay, so that's very important. So if we don't have that faith or confidence, then we're gonna say, ah, you know, I'm gonna waver and I'm gonna s maybe seek something else, uh, you know, be wishy-washy and, you know, so that then we're not gonna achieve through that. Okay, so we have to have that faith that this is the right path and that if I continue to cultivate, I will achieve. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, when a person appreciates God's graciousness and uh, teachers, holy teachers, hard work for the people, uh, reveals his good intentions, realizes the meaning of the truth, makes his best effort, uses and shows his wisdom, then all these are called the righteousness of the mind. Okay. So... Um, yeah, we have to learn to appreciate, uh, be grateful for basically everything. Everything is, you know, God has given us. Um, and also for us as cultivators, uh, we, we have to appreciate and be grateful to the holy teachers uh, for giving us the point transmission to allow us to transcend the samsara, okay? Um, so, but if we are grateful, you know, one of the, I guess you can say, you know, grateful is just kind of like inside, but outside we have to reveal that through our good intentions, right? Through helping maybe, helping uh, propagate this, this Tao that, and, and spread the truth, okay? Um, so uh, then, so then we, that, in that way also we, you know, the truth, 
we apply it, we use it in our everyday lives, and, and so through our actions, through our behavior, uh, and through our efforts, right? So uh, then, you know, we show our wisdom, right? So that, that, that's the righteous mind. So when a person realizes that to chase wealth and fame with all his effort until the end of his days will be like a razor-sharp knife whose fine edge will not last a long time. So it's, it's temporary. I mean, it, it'll, it, it doesn't, uh, that doesn't last. So that's not the ultimate truth. That's not the truth. Uh, and thus changes his goal of life and cultivates himself, right? So once we see that truth, then we say, okay, yeah, okay, it's good to, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to pursue. We have a career, of course. We pursue our dreams. Um, but don't forget that in the end, you know, we don't have anything. I mean, we, we, we can't take anything with us. So yes, we might, might maybe want to achieve a name for ourselves uh, uh, that we can, you know, that might be left for posterity, but um, ultimately there, there's something more important, okay? Because uh, we're, otherwise we're, we're still gonna be in the cycle of reincarnation. And in the next life, who knows, uh, you know, it may not be so good. Okay, so, uh, so he melts away his toughness and stubbornness, uses his wisdom to do things and does not use intelligence to contend for wealth like most people in the world. Does not use craftiness to gain profits for himself and cause loss for others and these are called the transformations of the mind. So we have to transform this mind to one that is, well, it's not selfish. And uh, yeah, basically, because these are kind of selfish things that you're seeking um, that to <coughs> basically to view everyone, all such beings as equal. Um, and so then we, we can be non-selfish and you know, be selfless basically. So we have to transform our way of our, our mind, our thinking. Uh, when a person improves his inner morality, strengthens his belief of Tao within himself, encourages himself to cultivate according to the Tao, magnifies his will to do the work of Tao, then these are all called the cultivations of the mind. So a real cultivator, then you can say that that's here, um, they achieve at this level that, uh, you know, start, you know, once we, the stuff that we learn uh, from the Buddha's teachings, um, that you know to be uh or you know the saints etc um sages that we improve our our own morality our moral character uh strengthens our own belief and faith in this Tao and this truth okay and encourages uh and, and be encouraged to cultivate according to that um truth um and then also then to actually perform the works of the Tao. okay um, so propagate the Tao, etc., and to try to teach other people, guide other people, uh, sentient beings. Uh, so that's really the cultivation of mind. Okay, so when a person can perform the deeds of goodness, sacrifice for doing the work of Tao, repay the merits that others gave him, do favors for others, then these are called the virtues of the mind. So now even, uh, you can say uh, at a more higher level, then uh, <coughs> we can do not only these good deeds and, and also sacrifice, Let's say we sacrifice our time, we sacrifice money, things like that, uh, for the Tao. Okay. Uh, ultimately, even you know the highest level is sacrificing our life for the Tao, uh, and we we know to because we are grateful. We know to repay the merits that others that we have gotten, or the grace that we have gotten from others, um, and we actually do favors for other people <coughs> and other sentient beings. Uh, so that is really the virtues, which is you know that that's even. Uh, more, um, ultimately, that that's what we are cultivating, right? We want to have virtues. Uh, um, so the virtues of the mind. Um, all of the above are essential ideas or thoughts um, that can allow a person to have merits and blessings, to have the ability to someday return to heaven and to become a saint. So to do good deeds and to do charitable work is the shortcut to becoming a saint, right? So that's very important that we have to do uh, so besides in the mind that we have to correct our mind, not have the evil mind, but have the good mind, um, and to perform those deeds, do those good deeds, um, which is the practice or the execution of, uh, or the implementation of, of that good mind. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, so then that is, well, especially now, right? Is why it says the shortcut to becoming a saint, uh, because, you know, in, sure, in religions, they also teach people to, to have that good mind, 
right, to do good. Uh, it's just that that th there's still it's the slow process. Okay, that's the slow way. Um, it's not the shortcut. It's the long winding way <laughs> to becoming a saint. All right, uh, but because right now we have we are in the the universal salvation, um, we have this shortcut. Okay, so heavens because of God's grace, uh, uh, mercy, that uh, we can, through these similar, you can say similar deeds that maybe a, a person in religion practice would do, good deeds, but we do it even more, uh, that we are allowed to, well, it, do, it doesn't just affect our future karma, okay, karmic lives, uh, that we can actually transcend and become a saint. Uh, so that's why it's, it's a true shortcut. Um, but it's only during this white period that we have that uh, opportunity. Okay, so so that that's that's really kind of one of the big differences between Tao and religion. Really, I mean, especially during now. I mean, you know, because right. I mean, because we can all do the same things, do good deeds, just like you know, in religious practice. But you know, but because they don't, well, they didn't get the three treasures. They didn't have to, you know, that transmission uh point transmission that yeah i mean they're still going to be stuck in that samsara right so yeah i guess because this is a short path it means that because we all have this karma right so it means that we have to pack quantity into this gravity it means that we might have to do a lot more and faster than people in other practice well, yeah, I mean, that too. I mean, it, it is because, yeah, because it's the shortcut, there, there is, yeah, we probably have to do more um, to achieve that same goal, right? So it's like, yeah, so it's like, you know, you, you want to go get to the top of the mountain, there's this winding road that goes up, right? So all these hairpin turns, and that's fine. It, it's, it gets you there without too much effort. But it's a longer way. But you can, if you want to, either fly, jump straight up to the top or whatever, climb straight up. It's harder, uh, but it's more direct. And so, yeah, that's a you know good analogy, I guess. Um, uh, so yeah, it, I mean, also of course our karma is compressed, if you will, into this one lifetime. Um, that for those who are going to achieve that all our past karmas will be compressed and uh, during this lifetime and we have to overcome all that, okay? So, so we have to do perform more merits to, to overcome it uh, and have that virtue as well, right? So, um, I mean, I think that even, you know, for those who receive the Tao, if, if they're not like, let's say they don't really cultivate, um, all the karma may not necessarily come to them in this, in this life. Um, because they're not, they're not even gonna they're not gonna achieve, so um, which means that they're gonna reincarnate again and they're gonna have a chance to be you know have to pay back in the future life. So so basically, the more we they, yeah basically yeah the the higher you can say the higher the level or the the more that we're gonna achieve means that the more we're gonna have these these karmic or these whatever. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it. The, the, these these uh, obstacles, I guess, will, 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 or these these um, these hardships and difficulties that will pop up um, to in our way. But but it, it, we should view it as a good thing that we can overcome these. That it, it's again it becomes a shortcut. Okay, so uh, yeah, so it basically boils down to you know you get. What you put into it, okay. So if you if you want it to be easy, then you know, okay, you know, it's going to take you many lifetimes. <laughs> so you won't be able to achieve it in one lifetime. Uh, so yeah. So the more you put into it, then the more we can achieve. Um, okay. So for future goals, from now on, you must not cease performing the work of Tao when you have are confronted with difficulties, and you should not put off the business of Tao when it is easy to perform. Right. All the saints' words are asking people to accomplish good deeds and exhorting people to perform goodness to realize truth is the goal of listening and to perform according to truth is the goal of realizing the truth okay um, okay so basically when we like we were just saying the, there there are going to be difficulties along the way uh, and actually the more we push ourselves to try to achieve even you know a higher level 
then we will probably encounter greater difficulties. Uh, but you know, don't let us stop stop us, right? Uh, we should have that faith that yeah, uh, you know, I want to achieve, and and you know, uh, so it's just like in school, right? You can say, oh, you know. Uh, I'm currently in, let's say, the fifth grade, but you know I'm going to skip a grade. But then you got to take the test. To, does that prove that you, you're worthy to jump to the seventh grade, right? Yeah. So same thing. Um, <clears throat> okay. So yeah, and don't wait. Unfortunately, a lot of people wait until it's kind of too late to perform merits, uh, and you know they wait until that karma comes to them, and they have a debilitating disease or something um, that prevents them from then performing merits or it makes it very difficult uh, you know so unfortunately there, there are many cases that we know about um, that happening uh, and it's because people put off the you know the business of Tao. I mean, they, 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 they weren't really serious about cultivating and so because Holy Teacher can only can only uh, kind of put off or hold back the karma for so long, uh, and you know, and if if basically, you know, because holy, I mean, well, Buddhas cannot get rid of our karma, but he can kind of negotiate with with those it's delay, delay, yeah. So he can negotiate with them. So okay, hey, let this person cultivate and get some merits because they also want merits. Those those ones who 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 want the, the payback, the right? The creditor. creditors, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they'll say, okay, I, I can accept merits as well. Right. Not, not all of them. Some, yeah, some, some, some they don't, just, they, don't yeah. they just really well, want because vengeance. Because it depends on the level of karma. Yeah, right? yeah. Because it's, it's very, very serious. Like you say, very serious. Well, then they may not want, it's, yeah, they, they, they just, just want vengeance. Too, yeah, they just, they just want just, retribution. Yeah. They want retribution. They yeah, it's just, they're just full of hate want, and, right, and anger. Right, right. That's so it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, yeah, so, but teacher can only hold them off for so long. I mean, they, they, if they see, hey, this guy's not making any progress, Looks not like doing any merits, they're, they're, they're being lazy. It's like, hey, you know, let us at him. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, so, yeah. yeah, so unfortunately, a lot that, of people, they don't see the urgency. Right, right. That, they don't realize that, the urgency. That, that, that's why, why we stress so heavily, we put so much emphasis in the last class, the Dharma class, to make Vows. Well, and then to and actually then to, to, to follow call, through to follow on the vows, yeah, fulfill through. the vows. Because <laughs> one of the things that we learn, what are the Buddha, what are the three three things that Buddhas cannot do? Yeah. One of them is to save you unconditionally, right? right? Non conditional, yeah. right? And what is those? What are those conditions? <laughs> no faith, no uh, no. We say, yeah, no, no faith, no vows, and no affinity. Now that affinity doesn't just mean that. Oh. Yeah, I happen to 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 know to to to, to you know meet 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 yeah. the Buddha right. <laughs> and, and and become and, and receive the Tao. Yeah, that, that that that's very superficial. That's very that the more deeper advanced level is. Do you have the affinity to become a disciple of the Buddha of Holy Teacher in this case? And what does that mean? To become a disciple, <laughs> that you have to cultivate. Yeah, right. that you have to make vows and cultivate. Right. Vows is one of the the other dirt, uh, requirements. So. Mm -hmm. Only if you could do, if you fulf if if you, you know, do those three right requirements, <coughs> yeah. can then Buddha save you, and that's how when we say, oh, you change your destiny, change your destiny. Well, how? You fulfill those three requirements, then Buddhas can change you, because there's something to like you say to to bargain, to yeah, bargain, yeah. to trade, to negotiate, yeah. whatever, against your debtors. Uh, I your karma. So therefore, that's how you can change your karma, which means change your destiny. Right. right. That's a, a, a good explanation. Right. How you do that? The affinity also, I guess, implies implies that we have cultivated for. You know, yeah, you have a foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a There's foundation. A foundation. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so a lot of people who, who maybe just have a very superficial thing. Right. Oh, I come. And we see the doubt, and, and they don't have a foundation to, right. to want to go to the next level. Right. You get it? Right. And that's Buddhas then cannot help you. Yeah. Because the Buddha, yeah, yeah, you may have because that proves that one, your faith is very shallow. Right. If that, if that, if you have faith, right, right, right? and no vows. So, 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 if you have no three, how can Buddha save you? Right. Remember, Buddhas right. cannot save you unconditionally. Right. Remember. Right. So you still need those three. <coughs> That's right. why in the Dharma class we stress so heavily in the last class.
class. 信愿行政, right? 信愿行, right? 信, vows. Right. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, 信 means faith. Yeah. 愿, vows, and 行 means cultivation. Right. And those three are, if you could do those three, then you fulfill, you negate those three conditions that Buddhas cannot save you. Yeah. I.e., change your destiny. Right. So, so, so people say, oh, of course I want to change my destiny. I want <laughs> to, I don't want to have bad karma. Of course. Then do those three. Right. Make sense? Right. <clears throat> but again, it's, it's their habits, their whatever, their views th that they cling to that maybe are not, you know, to say, oh, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to, I have to make money. I have to do these things. That, you know, all these they want to pursue these other things, and so, so, so then they don't, they, yeah. So they don't cultivate. I mean, well, it's not that you cannot make a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is degree. Yeah, right? that's yeah. the question. Right. Unfortunately, you're right. I mean, no, 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 no. If people respond to us as, oh, I don't have time, and I said, you know, we have to stress that, you know, we have to have find some level of. Satisfaction. Right. So that that's where greed comes. Yeah. In. Or you know dissatisfaction, yeah. whatever you know, never satisfied. Is that we ha that's the three poisons, right? Mm -hmm. Part of the three. We have to have a, I guess, level of understanding to say, hey, you know, that's enough. You know, I I, I should be satisfied right. with that. Right. I should be content. Right. Right. And not, you know, literally, you know, sacrifice your life right. to, 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 yeah. to make you know a million dollars to be or whatever whatever you know, some people do that right. unfortunately especially young people yeah. I mean, you know I mean, I'm saying you know, right. not older so so we have to have that kind of you can say that's a type of wisdom or understanding maybe that's a better then then you can say oh then yeah that, you know I have a roof I have a nice job already you know, why why kill yourself right work you know twenty hours a day to do that right. so and then you can then say okay then I can devote more time or some more time for cultivation right. or for right? Right? Yeah. So I think you have to have balance. Yeah, right? I mean, That's yeah. really the middle path. Yeah. Or the middle way. Right? Yeah. <coughs> right. So the spiritual balance spiritual versus the material balance. I mean yeah, there's gotta be some balance. of course the yeah the first thing I mean is saying that we should try to emphasize the the spiritual side of things more yeah, we didn't say hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the sixth vowel. That's, <laughs> yeah. so, so that's, well, yeah, right? yeah. that, that's the sixth vowel. But, but you know, we just say, you know, find a little bit more. No, whatever. Four, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. six is uh, yeah. uh, Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah. That's a man. Yeah. It's one of them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. So to, to re finally to to realize uh, the truth. Right, is, is the goal. Okay, so first we, we listen, right? We listen to the truth. We listen to the teachings, the Dharma, um, to realize the truth. And then to perform according to that truth and is the goal of finally of, of realizing that truth. So, so it goes from learning, right, to, to understanding and realizing, and to actually, we have to perform to actually finally realize what that truth is what that really means okay so it's not just an intellectual right not you know yet. understanding uh, there's action okay no another way of saying is well maybe more technical ways to say awaken your body mind yeah that's that's you know because people don't know what, what's my body <laughs> mind it's really the mind of our Buddha wisdom you, you can you can describe mind of it wisdom be, because yeah, mind yeah. Of, because people say what's Buddha nature you know yeah. Buddha nature is so hard to grasp you know it's so like conscience, I mean, yeah, but that's only part. Yeah, that's, right? a that's part only of part. It. So, so, this, so to be a little bit broader, you can say it's Bodhi mind. You know, it's the mind of our Buddha nature. You can say it that way. And what Bodhi mind? Don't forget, has different levels, yeah. too, of course. But, but at least to awaken a little bit and just say, "Ooh, yeah, I have something that's awesome. That's awesome. I don't understand it completely yet because I'm still at the beginning level. But over time." You know, you reach the level of the four immeasurable minds. Right, right. That is the, the you know, the, the the, you can say it's the embodiment. You can right. say of our bold, of our body mind. Right. That would be the highest, right? That's what we say. It's infinite. It's immeasurable. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So ultimately, then you will naturally. Because the four immeasurable minds, whatever. I mean, you'll naturally if you follow your body mind, then you'll naturally do. Do these right things, and, and there's a corresponding. So, so the mind, we say the body mind, is seen, it's, it's still very abstract. Okay, mm. yeah, it is. Bec but that's all internal, right? We say the yeah. mind is internal, yeah. right? As far as we can tell. But there's a corresponding external aspect, which is the wisdom part. 
you know, if you can reach to that, like say the four immeasurable minds, the highest level, then you'll develop, I mean, you'll, you'll manifest or whatever. It, it's called the Mahaprajna. That, that's what it is. And that's where that high level wisdom is. Remember mm -hmm. we talk about the four consciousness? I mean, the, 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 okay. the, the uh, Liu Qi Wu Ba, right? The six, yeah. seven, five, eight consciousness. Yeah. That, that Mahaprajna will encompass those four, if you want to describe mm -hmm. them, you know, you know, if you want to go in a little bit more detail, it's like, oh, what, 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 what is the, the Mahaprajna? Well, it, it has these four types of, actually there's many more, but, but these broad, broad, right, levels of, you know, the great mirror wisdom, right. the, the, the what, you know, whatever, all, all those wisdoms, right? Observing the, 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 yeah, the, um, the uh, universal, observing. universal, uh, 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 whatever, wisdom, I forgot, whatever, you yeah. know, those terms. Yeah, yeah, universal, universal equal, 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 I don't know, yeah, equal, equal wisdom, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, you know, whatever, I have it here, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, so that's what it means. Yeah. So, so, so once we have, we reach that level, you'll have that wisdom. And then once you have that wisdom, then, then people say, whoa, 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 what good is that? Whoa, whoa, you know, those wisdom still seems too abstract. Well, you can use it, more, uh, give it more, 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 more tangible, aspect which is then you know what's what's considered a priority what's not a priority what's not urgent and what's urgent right yeah i mean but ba you basically that. you you'll right you'll you'll understand or you'll know to do the things that don't create karma right uh, yeah i mean well, sure. Yeah, I mean, be, yeah, being yeah. So all, all other things, you know, you wouldn't be selfish. You know, you'd be selfless, more selfless. Uh, you, you, you'll yeah, equanimity, right? Yes. Treat everyone equal, right? Uh, and you, yeah, so you won't. There, therefore, you know, the next thing here, talk about desires. You won't like seek things that that basically could potentially, well, you, you create karma, you create karma, and then that plant the seeds of karma, which then result in. Uh, reincarnation. So, uh, so okay. So, hmm, let's see. There's only a few minutes here, but um, uh, maybe huh? righteous desires and good, good deeds. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. There are two kinds of desires in the mind. One is righteous desire. The other is material or selfish desire. So you can say it's kind of selfless kind of desires, but. There are three levels of good deeds, superior good deeds, medium good deeds, and <laughs> inferior good deeds, okay? So a cultivator of Tao should be able to recognize all of the above. Following is a detailed discussion. Okay, so righteous desire. To be a cultivator of Tao, one should extinguish all material desires. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately... Yeah, <laughs> no I, desire. Yeah. yeah. It's just so. Yeah. Suchness. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, that's the just highest like, level. Yeah. But, but remember, it's, it depends on the perspective, right? So when Ho Holy Teacher is talking about this, he's talking about the perspective of the human mind. Yeah. So therefore, unfortunately, we have this dualistic, we say, well, what's non-righteous, yeah. what's righteous. Unfortunately, because, because, because we're not at that level, yeah. that suchness. Right. <coughs> if we're all enlightened, then Buddha doesn't need to say there are desires. It's all suchness. Right. You know, comes from our four immeasurable mind. That's the way it is. But we're not at that level yet. Yeah, we, we still have to view it as, oh, good and bad or whatever, you know, righteous and not righteous. Okay, so pacify his mind, make his thoughts tranquil, reform his bad conduct, follow the good ideas and perform accordingly. Okay, so the exceptional person can be enlightened by performing all of these things. He can become a saint. However, normal people find difficulty in performing all these things. Thus, confusion always arises in their minds. And yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, in actuality, it can be said that a normal person is the same as a saint, and heaven is the same as annoyance. Right? Uh, what is it? Uh, um, fan nao ji. Fan, yeah, that's the Ji right? So yeah. that, that's what that, that's that the second thing. Right. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah, heaven is the same as annoyance. Basically, you can say that through, well, ultimately, they all come from the Buddha nature. They're all one, okay, they're all part of the one. It's just that how, when it comes out, then you have this kind of a dual, uh, dualistic thing where one is good, one is not. Um, and, but ultimately, we have to view, that, view it as, yeah, I mean, we could say, it's like suchness, okay, but <laughs> we treat it as suchness as opposed to, oh, this is an, an annoyance, right? But, uh, we can also, as, as a, at a human level, right, 
we have to then treat this annoyance as a way to achieve the the body mind or the you know the heaven um, and so uh, by overcoming that all right so without without the annoyance you know we would not be able to achieve that necessarily right so these so yeah uh, through <laughs> through these various different okay so if a person's mind is confused then he is just a normal person but when his mind is awakened and enlightened um, then he is a saint okay yeah uh, when a person's thoughts are always involved in the material world then it's called annoyance but when his thoughts do not involve him in the material world then it's called heaven right so <laughs> so again it's kind of like a perspective um, how we perceive and view things um, if we are well this is you can say <laughs> this is from the Buddha's point of view okay the enlightened point of view that if we're pursuing all the material things then that's the, that's the fun now okay so that that's the annoyance or vexations or we create worries for ourselves through these things so we don't uh, we don't we don't treat it as such or thusness okay so um, all right so uh, I don't know this is basically well the next thing is talking about three poisons we have to get rid of three poisons um, well that's because the reason but then people have to understand why do you say it's annoying? Why, why do you say you know, right because there is that so self <laughs> no, because we become attached yeah. to a form and we're never satisfied yeah we're never satisfied right so the greed the greed comes in there and attachment comes in there okay so that's why and, and so and, and so that's why we're never satisfied so we're constantly pursuing that okay so that's why that's the first, it's called, but when it stops to not involve in the then this is called heaven in mind. Right. And, or you can say Diamond Sutra say what? Li Xiang Ming Fu, right? You know, Li Xiang Ming Fu, to be, you know, without form is Buddha. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, right. yeah. that's a short, so, <coughs> you know, that's what it is. Right, okay. So, all right, well, mm, I think uh, it's time. So, uh, all right, well. Well, <laughs> to be continued <laughs> uh, next time whoever picks up alright so uh, if I had said anything um, wrong or uh, maybe not satisfactory uh, I ask God and the Buddhas for forgiveness and also for transmitters, lectures, corrections thank you